thank you very much. The musical selections were played by Mr. Brian Thompson. He was sent on loan to us from one of our partners, Brooklyn Conservatory of Music. Again, my name is Chaplain Dr. Ingrid P. Lewis Martin, and I am the Deputy Brooklyn Borough President. Before we begin the program, I want to take time to thank all of our partners. I'm thanking all of our partners up front because so many times at the end, everyone's in a rush and you don't get to th properly thank people. So special thanks to Barclays Center. They did a New York City flower tribute on the plaza and they have a remembrance graphic on the front oculus in glass. Brick's Art Media, Brooklyn Academy of Music, Yes, Brooklyn Academy of Music. <laughs> Brooklyn Botanic Garden. At, um, starting at five o'clock today, they started playing a special song that was written last year during COVID called Love. Brooklyn Conservatory of Music, again, Brian. Please have a seat and join us if you want to. Mm -hmm. The Brooklyn Museum. Brooklyn Public Library. CUNY City Tech. Greenwood Cemetery, St. Francis College, and Wyckoff Heights Medical Center. Later in the program, you will hear from the president. Earlier today, we had an online, an online memorial to people who did not survive COVID, people who transitioned due to COVID. That online presentation was in partnership with Interfaith Hospital, Investor Bank, Sons, Songs of Solomon, and we have Bishop Chantel Wright with us here, and she was the person who put that program together. And also Weeksville, um, Weeksville Heritage Center. That program was on at two o'clock. You can still find it, it's on, um, what is it like on again? I don't want to forget. No, not on, only under Eric Adams. It's on One Brooklyn. It's on One Brooklyn COVID-19 event. So you can find it there. COVID-19 was devastating. It came into New York City and all of the world with a vengeance. So many people lost loved ones, neighbors, friends, colleagues, young children. It was devastating. It was a time when our city literally froze. We literally stopped. Everything stopped and we stood still. It was a time when neighbors had to take care of neighbors. It was a time when mothers who were sometime elderly had to take care of their young, younger sons when it should be the other way around because when this disease, this ailment came into our city, it just devastated families and no one really knew what to do. Our borough was actually the first borough to encounter the first person to die from COVID. Records show that. It was an 83-year-old woman with emphysema. She was hospitalized for emphysema. She became a victim of COVID and she passed away. At the time, people didn't know exactly what was going on. No one knew exactly what was happening. And our first responders did everything within their ability, within their power, to ensure that people who were not afflicted with the ailment, with the disease, were taken care of properly. So we have today with us our partner from Wyckoff, the president and CEO of Wyckoff Hospital, Ramon Rodriguez, who can speak to the issue of COVID and how it affected members in our community, how his hospital personnel worked hard and tirelessly to protect those who were not victimized by COVID, and to also share with you new hope for the future in terms of the vaccine and what good it can do. So without any further ado, I ask President Ramon Rodriguez to please come forward to the podium. Thank you. Thank you very much.
Good afternoon, everyone. I want to thank uh, Deputy Borough President, uh, my hero, Borough President of Brooklyn, a man who has shown us that through self-healing, it's the best kind of clinical practice. I, I've been asked to talk about a few things. Um, I want to thank all of you for coming today. Uh, the practice of medicine, the soul of what a hospital does comes from its people. We at Wyckoff Heights Medical Center have worked for 130 years through different migrations of people who came to Bushwick and Ridgewood and other areas. And in the last year, all of us have been affected by this virus. One out of three people in this city know who has had the virus. One out of five know people who have died from the virus. On March 1st, 2020, the first case of COVID was detected and released. It was a healthcare worker who had made a trip to Iran. At the time, very little, as was said by our Deputy Borough President, very little was known. A few days later, actually March 3rd, 2020, an 83-year-old patient entered our emergency department at Wyckoff Hospital on a stretcher with severe breathing problems. It was at that point where people felt that it was all an upper respiratory problem. We know now that it's not just, and I don't want to minimize it, it's not just respiratory problems. A slight fever, body aches, all those kinds of things. And we thought at that time that people who traveled would be the ones who would present themselves at the hospital. But this woman had not traveled for four months. Yes, she had been sick with pulmonary problems. She had been a long-term patient of ours and has been in the hospital more than a few times. And when she came, 26 people took care of her. And then we found out a few days later that she had COVID-19 virus. And of the 26 people who took care of her, 20 of them had to go on quarantine. And one of our nurses contracted the virus from that patient and immediately within hours had to be put on a ventilator. Those 20 people, thank God, all survived. What happened then was something quiet, almost an almost quiet explosion of patients with symptoms of this pandemic's virus. Almost day to night, we were in the eye of a hurricane. 75% of the people who live in the area around Wyckoff are Latinos. About 10% are people of color. All of them are working people. All of them struggle to make a living in this very expensive city. And we, like other safety net hospitals, are here to help. On March 14th, after a struggle of a little bit more than 10 days, this wonderful mother with three daughters, one of whom was and still is a nurse, passed on. She went to a better place. The first death of COVID-19. March 14th, 2020, in New York City, but not the last. God puts rainbows 
in the clouds so that each of us in the dreariest and most dreaded moments can see a possibility of hope. God puts rainbows in the clouds so that each of us in the dreariest and most dreaded moments can see a possibility of hope. If Maya Angelou, who wrote those words, was here today, she probably could do a much better job than I to describe. And I want to give you an analogy. Those clouds, that rain, is COVID-19. And our masks, the work we do, everything we perform to try to keep from contracting and taking on this virus to our relatives, to the people we love, to our coworkers. That mask that we wear is our umbrella. That mask that we wear is our raincoat. And maybe the rainbow is each of us, or maybe the rainbow is a vaccine. I am 67 years old. I've worked at Wyckoff for almost 10 years. It is the best job I've ever had in my life. I've worked in public service in the private sector, and I have worked very hard, but I'm just a worker for the nurses and the doctors and the people who work with them. My job is to protect them. My job is to speak on behalf of them because their job is much harder. At Interfaith and Wyckoff, two of the sponsors for today, for the borough president, again, my hero, we have vaccinated more than 35,000 people. We will continue to vaccinate anyone who comes to us. There are some who are afraid, but those 35,000 people are safer today than they were before they got the vaccine. They could still get COVID, but they probably won't die. Today, there's 38 people in the hospital who have COVID-19, one-fifth of the people who are inpatients in our hospital. I ask that if you've not done so, or if you know somebody who hasn't had a vaccine, please recognize the virus as the cloud and the vaccine as your rainbow. We look up to the sky someday, and once again, we'll give our thanks to the Creator. I want to thank the Borough President, Deputy Borough President, for giving me a moment to share my thoughts. I welcome you all to all of our community hospitals in Brooklyn and ask that if you need something, we'll be there for you. And recognize today that we're fighting a fight that requires many soldiers. And please help us. Please take that vaccine so we can get rid of this terrible virus. God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you, President Ramon. Before we continue, I'm going to ask the members of the dais to please stand up so we can do a moment of silence. Just one moment of silence for the lives lost to COVID-19. Thank you. Without ever any further ado, it's my pleasure to introduce to you a young man who's a member of a union that we have a really close relationship and bond with, B32BJ. That's how we got to know Mark. But he has a very compelling story. He lost friends and family members due to COVID-19, and he was also blessed with a newborn in the height of the pandemic. So without any further ado, I ask Mr. Mark Ramon to please come forward and share some words with us. Good evening, buenas tardes. My name is Mark Anthony Espinoza. As 
the Deputy Borough President had mentioned, I am a 32BJ member. Um, this past year has been really hard on all of us. I myself had gone through tremendous changes in my life. I have lost 13 family and friends, well, or I stopped counting at 13 family and friends. Um, it's gonna be a year come April 3rd that my father went to Wyckoff Hospital. Two hours later, my grandmother died, 95 years old. Eight days later, as we were burying my grandmother, I get a phone call that they're gonna intubate my father. And just before I got to tell him, hey listen, you gotta fight this. I want you to know you're gonna be a grandfather. He died three hours later. It's been tough. But come this Saturday, I, have a, I will have a four month old in the house, already tossing and turning, already have a tooth growing in, and the time has gone by so quickly. Not only is she growing up, but the one year anniversary of my grandmother and my father's death is arriving. I am grateful to Borough President Eric Adams and Deputy Borough President, uh, Deputy Borough Chancellor, inviting me out here today to speak. It brings great light and joy to be able to see my family on the departure and on the arrival. I don't wish this on anybody. But with great sorrow comes great joy. Thank you. So without any further ado, it's a great pleasure and honor for me to introduce to you, well not introduce, because most of you should already know him, our Borough President, Eric Adams. Thank you so much, and to the families who have lost loved ones, I believe the story we just heard symbolizes what we all went through. And I was sharing with my son that my grandparents went through the attack on Pearl Harbor. Many of us went through the terrorist attacks on the Trade Center. And now our children are dealing with the COVID attack on our society. COVID virus is not terrorism, but it brought about terror. And just as though the images of what happened in those previous generations had a major impact on our view of not only of the city and country, but of ourselves. And it personifies our resiliency. It personifies the circle of life. And we are hoping that this display, one year later, after 9,000 Brooklyn Knights have transitioned from the physical to the spiritual, we are saying that the absence of their body is not the absence of our memories. And out of everything that happened during the time of COVID from the day that it arrived here at our city, I saw something remarkable and amazing. I saw everyday New Yorkers in Brooklyn nights in spite of their fear and uncertainty, they stood up and stood tall. They helped their neighbors and knocked on doors and delivered countless numbers of meals to seniors who could not leave. 
They were outside school buildings, assisting with grabbing gold mills. They went to hospitals and handed out PPEs and gave devices to help extend lives of individuals. And there's one part of this journey that was not even noticed. It involved the Chinese community. When COVID hit this city, our office, Brooklyn Borough Hall, reached out to the Chinese community, the partnerships and sister cities that we had in China. And we told them that there was a delay in getting PPEs in the ground to the inner cities, to the Nitras in the Brownsvilles in the South Jamaica, Queens, and to our safety net hospitals. They immediately delivered to New York City over 200,000 PPEs, face shields, ventilators, food supplies, and other items. Even in the midst of the president calling COVID-19 a Chinese disease and caused rapid attacks on the Chinese community, in their darkest moments, they stood up and showed what our country is about. And that is why we are not only lifting our voices today to lift up those who we've lost, but to also use this moment to call the end to the hate crimes that has been, have been inflicted on our Chinese brothers and sisters in this city. And so these displays of showing the arrivals and the departures is stating that the people we've lost have taken flight and the people who have arrived, the babies, the children, they will have a moment to reflect as they become older that we did not forget the impact that COVID-19 has had on our city. But we also will not forget how we responded as the greatest race alive, and that's the human race. I thank you, New York. I thank you, America. I thank you, Brooklyn. And I thank you, the people of this city. Thank you very much. So at this time, we have another one of our partners, the organization who is responsible for the wonderful art display of arrival and departure, COVID-19, on our steps. So representing them, we have Mr. David Finder, who will come forward and give remarks. He will tell you. The, the, the history and the origin of the art display in a little more. Mr. Binder, please. Um, I'm honored to be here and to be part of this with the whole band family who is over there. They are an amazing team and I'm very honored to get to work with them. And I wanna thank Eric Adams, and um, for having us. We're really so proud to be here to be part of this special event. Um, and to present Arrivals and Departures. Arrivals and Departures is an interactive installation. It invites us, the community, to share the names of people who have arrived or departed as a way to celebrate a birth or to commemorate a death, or to think about the moments in between. British artists, uh, Yara and Davina, who would be here today if they could, but unfortunately they couldn't come across the oceans. Um, Yara and Davina, they encourage the community to explore issues around life and loss and collective grief. They also ask us to question and change who is honored through public memorials. BAM chose to present this work because we wanted to create a space for the Brooklyn community to openly reflect on life and death and the beauty of in-between. As we look forward to the spring, to joy and rejuvenation, we hope this artwork will transform this space into a site of recognition and remembrance. BAM is thrilled to present this work here at the Borough Hall through April 11th. We invite you, the public, 
to interact with the work by submitting names online. And you can find out more about how to do that at our website, bam.org. Arrivals and Departures is the first project of BAM Spring Season, where the city becomes the stage. We are collaborating with some of Brooklyn's most recognizable and beloved locations and activating their spaces with our adventurous programming. We're going to be uh, at Lafrac Ice Skating Rink, at the Navy Yard, at the Brooklyn Botanical Garden, and on the sidewalks of Fort Greene. Please join us. And now, um, let's welcome Deputy Borough President Ingrid P. Lewis Martin, who will close us out. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Minda. So, later on this evening, as dusk settles in and it gets a bit darker, the front of Borough Hall, which is actually known as the back of Borough Hall, where the plaza is, will have a display of yellow lights. And a number of our cultural institutions will also follow in suit. BAM, for example, will do the best they can to be yellow. <laughs> they said it's a little hard, but they're gonna try. The Brooklyn, the Brooklyn Public Library will be yellow. The Brooklyn Museum will be yellow. And the Brooklyn Botanic Gardens will be yellow. They will all have a yellow light display. And we encourage anyone who can um, put a yellow light on from now until the end of um, the month to um, do so, so that you can join in partnership with us. So we just wanted to pay homage to those who transitioned as a result of COVID-19. We wanted to welcome all of the new life that was presented to us during COVID-19. We want to encourage all of our New Yorkers and the world to stay strong and to stay vigilant and to work in partnership and to work as brothers and sisters. If you notice, whenever there's a disaster or a catastrophe, people work together. We should do that all of the time. We shouldn't wait until there's a disaster, a COVID-19, a World Trade Center bombing. We should know that we are brothers and sisters all of the time. And we should work in collaboration all of the time. And as the president of Wyckoff said, the star, the rainbow, is the vaccine. I encourage all people who are eligible to get the vaccine to get the vaccine. So I thank you for joining with us. I thank all of our partners. I said each name earlier because I didn't want to forget. I thank our borough president for being a visionary, for always doing what is absolutely best for his constituents and for recognizing when there is a need for healing. Today is a day for healing. So thank you for joining with us. Peace and blessings.